I discovered my mill and sales plan to steal my husband's inheritance by faking his death. I reported them to the police and now my husband is furious. I, 28F, have been married to Oliver, 31M, for four years. We met in college when I was a sophomore and he was a senior. I was immediately drawn to his kind nature and sense of humor. We dated for three years before getting married in a small ceremony. Oliver has always been very close to his mom, Linda, 55F, and sister Lily, 33F. They're a tight-knit unit, which I admired at first. Oliver's dad left when he was just five years old, leaving Linda to raise two kids on her own. She worked multiple jobs to make ends meet, and Oliver often talks about how they struggled financially, but always had each other's backs. I come from a different background. My parents are still happily married, and while we weren't rich, we were comfortable. I have two older brothers who I'm close with, but not in the same intense way Oliver is with his family. This difference has caused some tension over the years. When Oliver and I first started dating, Linda and Lily were polite but distant. I always felt like an outsider around them, like I was intruding on their little circle. Oliver would assure me they just needed time to warm up, but even after four years of marriage, I still don't feel fully accepted. Things took a turn about six months ago when Lily's husband Tom passed away suddenly from an aneurysm. It was devastating for everyone, especially since they'd only been married for two years. Lily fell into a deep depression, barely leaving her house. Linda started asking me to help out with errands and chores for Lily. At first, it was small things, picking up groceries, doing some laundry. I was happy to help during such a difficult time. But the requests kept escalating. Soon, I was cooking all of Lily's meals, cleaning her entire house, even paying some of her bills. If I ever tried to say no, Linda would lay on the guilt trip. She'd remind me how Lily was grieving and needed support, how family should stick together in tough times. Oliver was working long hours and traveling for work, so he was oblivious to what was happening. I felt stuck and didn't know how to bring it up without seeming heartless. This went on for months, with me essentially becoming Lily's unpaid housekeeper on top of my own job and household responsibilities. I was burning out fast. I'd come home from work, rush to Lily's to cook and clean, then come back home to do it all over again for Oliver and me. My own work was suffering, and I was constantly exhausted. I tried to talk to Oliver about it a few times, but he'd just say how proud he was of me for helping his sister. He'd remind me of all the times Lily had been there for him growing up, like when she worked extra shifts at her part-time job to buy him a suit for prom. I felt guilty for even considering complaining. Then last week, everything changed. Lily asked me to grab some documents from her home office to bring to her at work. When I went in, I noticed her computer was open to an email draft. I didn't mean to snoop, but a phrase caught my eye. Dad's inheritance. This was shocking since Oliver's dad had never been in the picture. As far as I knew, they hadn't heard from him in over 25 years. I started reading and couldn't believe what I saw. Apparently, Oliver's estranged father had passed away recently, leaving a substantial inheritance to be split between Linda, Lily, Oliver, and their families. The email was to Linda, discussing how to keep the entire inheritance for themselves without Oliver or me finding out. They had forged documents claiming Oliver was deceased to cut us out entirely. I was stunned by their greed and deception. As I read more, I discovered this wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. They'd been planning this for weeks, ever since they first learned about the inheritance. There were detailed discussions about how to hide the money, what to tell Oliver if he ever found out, even plans to guilt him into giving them his share if their initial plan failed. I felt sick to my stomach. All those months of running myself ragged to help Lily? And this is how they repaid us? I thought about all the times Linda had guilted me into doing more, all while knowing she was planning to steal from us. I took photos of the email and other incriminating documents as evidence. Then, without really thinking it through, I called. The police to report the fraud. Officers came and seized Lily's computer. Both she and Linda were arrested on the spot. When Oliver got home that evening, I sat him down and told him everything. To my shock, he was furious with me for involving the authorities. He said I should have talked to him first and let him handle it privately. We got into a huge fight where he accused me of overstepping and damaging his relationship with his family. Oliver kept saying I didn't understand their family dynamic, that there must be some explanation. He insisted that his mom and sister would never do something like this, that I must have misunderstood. When I showed him the photos I'd taken of the emails, he got even angrier, saying I had no right to go through Lily's personal information. The argument escalated quickly. I reminded Oliver of all the times I'd bent over backward to help his family, how I'd put my own needs aside time and time again. I told him about how exhausted and taken advantage of I'd felt these past months. Oliver accused me of keeping score, saying that's not how family works. 
by the end of the night, we were both in tears. Oliver stormed out, saying he needed space to think. He went to stay with a friend, leaving me alone in our house, feeling lost and confused. Oliver has barely spoken to me in days. He's been in contact with Linda and Lily, who are facing serious charges. I truly thought I was doing the right thing by reporting a crime, but now I'm second-guessing myself. Was I wrong to go to the police without talking to Oliver first? Should I have let him deal with his family's betrayal privately? I'm hurt that he seems more concerned about them than me after what they tried to do. I don't know where we go from here or if our marriage can recover from this. Aida? Update 1. It's been about two weeks since my last post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their supportive comments. Reading them helped me feel less crazy and more confident in my actions. Oliver came home after a few days, but things were tense between us. We barely spoke, just coexisting in the same space without really communicating. It was like living with a stranger. I was miserable, but I didn't know how to bridge the gap between us. Finally, after about a week of this, I couldn't take it anymore. I sat Oliver down and told him we needed to talk. I explained how hurt I was that he seemed more concerned about his mom and sister than about me or the fact that they tried to steal from us. I laid out everything I'd been feeling over the past months. The exhaustion, the feeling of being taken advantage of, the hurt of never truly being accepted by his family. To my surprise, Oliver broke down. He admitted he'd been in shock and didn't know how to process everything at first. He said he'd visited Linda and Lily in jail and confronted them about their actions. Apparently, they showed zero remorse and even tried to manipulate him into helping them get out of trouble. Oliver told me about the visit in detail. He said Linda had tried to play the victim, crying about how hard she'd worked to raise him and Lily on her own. Lily had lashed out, accusing Oliver of abandoning the family now that he was married. They both insisted they deserved the money more than Oliver did because they'd struggled more in life. Oliver said that conversation was a wake-up call. He realized how toxic their influence has been and how much he's enabled their behavior over the years. He told them he was cutting contact for the foreseeable future. We also discussed the inheritance situation. Oliver reached out to his dad's lawyer to get more information. It turns out his father, Michael, had terminal cancer and wanted to make amends before he died. The inheritance is substantial, several million dollars plus property. The lawyer shared some details about Michael's life. Apparently, he had struggled with alcohol addiction when Oliver was young, which led to him leaving the family. He got sober about 15 years ago and had been trying to build up the courage to reach out to his kids. The cancer diagnosis pushed him to finally make things right, even if he couldn't do it in person. Oliver is struggling with mixed emotions about his dad. On one hand, he's angry about being abandoned as a child. He talked about how he used to wait by the window on his birthday, hoping his dad would show up. On the other hand, he feels grateful for this final gesture and curious to learn more about his father's life. As for Linda and Lily, they're still in jail awaiting trial. Their lawyer is trying to get them a plea deal, but it looks like they'll face significant jail time regardless. Oliver said he won't be bailing them out or helping with legal fees. I asked Oliver why he reacted so strongly to me calling the police initially. He admitted he has trauma from a bad experience with law enforcement as a teenager. Apparently, he and a friend were roughed up by cops after getting caught with alcohol underage. He said he panicked thinking about his mom and sister being mistreated. Oliver shared more about this incident. He and his friend had been celebrating after a football game, drinking beer in the park. The cops who caught them were unnecessarily aggressive, slamming them against the police car and twisting their arms. Oliver ended up with a sprained wrist. The incident was brushed under the rug and Oliver's been wary of police ever since. I understand his fear better now, but I told Oliver I still believe reporting the crime was the right thing to do. He agreed and apologized again for lashing out at me. We both acknowledged we need to work on our communication. Oliver also apologized for not noticing how much pressure his family had been putting on me. He admitted he'd been blind to their faults for a long time, always making excuses for their behavior. He promised to be more aware and supportive in the future. We talked about our childhoods and how they've shaped our views on family. Oliver shared more stories about growing up poor, like how he and Lily would make up games to distract themselves from being hungry. I opened up about feeling like I never quite fit in with my own family, always a bit of an oddball among my more traditional brothers. Things between us are still a bit tense, but slowly improving. We're trying to focus on supporting each other through all the legal and financial complications ahead. We've agreed to be more open with each other about our feelings and concerns moving forward. I'm cautiously optimistic that we can come out stronger on the other side of this mess. It's going to take time and effort, but for the first time in a while, I feel like we're on the same team again. Update two, another few weeks have passed and we've made some big decisions. 
After a lot of discussion, Oliver and I decided to use part of the inheritance money to start our own business together. We're both leaving our current jobs to focus on this new venture full time. The business idea actually came from a shared passion we'd neglected over the years. Oliver and I both love cooking, and we've always talked about opening a small restaurant someday. With the inheritance, we finally have the means to make it happen. We've spent countless hours planning menus, scouting locations, and crunching numbers. It's exciting but also scary to make such a big change. However, we feel like this shared goal is bringing us closer together after all the recent tension. We're having to communicate and collaborate in new ways. Oliver's been opening up more about his complicated feelings regarding the inheritance. He confessed that part of him feels guilty for using the money, like he doesn't deserve it after all these years of no contact with his dad. We've had some deep conversations about forgiveness and second chances. We also decided to move into one of the properties Oliver inherited from his father. It's in a nicer area than our current place and will give us a fresh start. The house is an old Victorian with lots of character, but it needs some work. We've been spending weekends painting and fixing it up together. Going through his dad's belongings has been emotional for Oliver, but also healing in some ways. He's learning about parts of his father's life he never knew. We found old photo albums, including some pictures of Oliver as a baby that he'd never seen before. There were also journals where Michael wrote about his regrets and his hopes for reconciliation. Linda and Lily's trial date is set for next month. Their lawyer tried to pressure Oliver into testifying on their behalf, but he refused. He's still struggling with guilt and conflicted feelings, but is staying firm in his decision to cut contact. The other day, we ran into Lily's former best friend at the grocery store. She told us that Lily had been spreading lies about the situation, claiming that I had set them up and fabricated evidence. It was upsetting to hear, but Oliver immediately shut it down and defended me. It meant a lot to see him stand up for me like that. I've been encouraging Oliver to talk to a therapist to work through his complicated family history. He's hesitant but considering it. For now, we're focused on supporting each other and building our new life together. The business planning has been a welcome distraction from all the legal drama. We're in the process of securing a location for the restaurant and have started reaching out to potential suppliers. Oliver's been experimenting with recipes in our new kitchen, and I've been working on the business plan. It feels like we're finally moving forward instead of being stuck in the pain of the past few months. There's still a long road ahead, but for the first time in a while, I'm excited about the future. Update three, the trial is over. Linda and Lily were both found guilty of fraud and sentenced to three years in prison. Oliver attended the sentencing, but didn't speak to them. It was a difficult day. Oliver was quiet on the drive home, lost in thought. When we got back, he finally opened up about how he was feeling. He said seeing his mom and sister in handcuffs was surreal, like watching a movie about someone else's life. Part of him still couldn't believe they'd gone to such lengths to deceive him. We talked late into the night, rehashing old memories and trying to make sense of everything that's happened. Oliver shared stories from his childhood, some good and some bad. He talked about the time Lily stayed up all night to help him finish a school project, and about the Christmas when Linda worked three jobs to buy them presents. But he also remembered the manipulation, the guilt trips, the constant pressure to put family above everything else. I think the trial really drove home the reality of the situation for Oliver. He's realizing he can honor the good memories while also acknowledging the hurt they've caused. It's a difficult balance, but he's working on it. We're moving forward with our plans and trying not to dwell on the past. Our new business is launching next month and we're settling into the new house. The restaurant renovations are almost complete and we're in the process of hiring staff. It's been a whirlwind of activity, but it feels good to be building something positive after all the negativity. Oliver has started seeing a therapist to work through his feelings about his family. It's early days, but he says it's helping him process everything. He's also been reading books about setting boundaries and breaking cycles of toxic family dynamics. We've had some disagreements as we navigate this new chapter of our lives, but we're handling them better than before. We're both making an effort to communicate more openly and honestly. It's not always easy, but it feels like we're growing stronger as a couple. There are still challenges ahead. We're both nervous about the restaurant opening, and there's always the possibility that Linda and Lily will try to cause trouble once they're released. But we're facing these challenges together, which makes all the difference. I'm proud of how far Oliver has come in setting boundaries with his family. It hasn't been an easy journey, but he's shown incredible strength and resilience. We're both learning and growing from this experience. There are still days when I second-guess my decision to call the police, wondering if there was another way it could have played out. But then I remember the deception, the manipulation, and I know I did the right thing. It may have been a difficult path, but it led us to where we are now, and I'm grateful for that. As we prepare for the restaurant opening, I find myself feeling cautiously optimistic about the future. We've been through so much, 
but we've come out the other side stronger. Whatever challenges come our way, I know we'll face them together.